Praise our God. We are rejoicing. Thank Him. And may peace and grace and the vision of the lampstand be with you all for this conference. The topic of this conference is the vision of the golden lampstand, which is a very crucial topic in this last age. Brother and sisters, we need to see this vision of the go of golden lampstand. And for this age, it signifies the local churches which establish through all the earth and express His glory in order to end this age and bring the Lord back. Praise Him for message one. Mentioned about the type of the golden lampstand for the building of the tabernacle and the temple. Thus, the golden lampstand is for the building of the tabernacle and the temple. Roman number one, the progression of the biblical revelation concerning the golden lampstand is always related to God's building. Whenever we mention about lampstand, it always related to the building. In God's economy, we all need to know that the building is so important. If we as a believers in the Lord and we do not know what is God's building, it is so unfortunate. We will not only to have revelation and understand God's building, we also had to be enrolled ourselves into this building. Amen. And this building need to be ultimately consummated in the new Jerusalem, the holy city, the built city, the most beautiful and glorious in the universe. Amen. Praise the Lord. And these City is his bride. Hallelujah. Concerning the vision of this of the building, we need to see in the Bible from Genesis, it's already mentioned about building. In Genesis, brother and sister, after God's created man, what did he do next? His purpose in created man. It is for man to be the vessel to contain and express him, to express him and to have dominion, even to subdue his enemy. Amen. After God, man was created and he put man in the garden, the garden in Aden, and he put that him in front of the tree of life in Genesis 2.9. We see the tree of life and then also another tree, the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. His purpose is to receive the tree of life, which is God himself as life, to be their supply. And after that, in Genesis 2.10, we see one river went forth from Eden, which is the water of life. And this river parted into four branches. First one is Pishon, which go around the whole land of Havila and it was cre and it was creates the gold and delium and also honors that is gold so gold pearl and precious stone these these are for god's building which is the new jerusalem to build the new jerusalem and the vocabulary of building where did we see it we can see it in uh, Genesis 2, 20 and 21. And uh, when he created man, 
alone it was not appropriate therefore he needs a counterpart to match him therefore he caused a deep sleep to fall upon Adam and after that he took one of his ribs after he took it in verse 22 he said that and Jehovah God built the rib which he had taken from the man into a woman and brought her to the man Amen. Brothers and sisters, we use built. The word that we use, we use built. But other, other version, they use make. Because in Genesis, we can see three words in chapter 1. 1-1, one, one, we say that, in the beginning, God created. The first word is creates. It's also in English, creates. And the second word, which appear in Genesis, the book of Genesis, and this is make, make. Make is also translated as creates. As uh, Genesis 1 1 creates, and the version of the denomination also use creates. And when we come to Genesis 2 22, In the New Testament, Matthew sixteen eighteen, what did he say? And I also say to you that you are Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church. Here, in the New Version, we say that build. Upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of Hades shall not prevail against it. Here, the first appeared in the New Testament, which is the church. When we mentioned about the church, we mentioned about the building. This building related to 
the church. His purpose is to build the church. And when the church is built, the gates of Hades, all the, his power of the devil will be subdued. This is the great prophecy in the New Testament. Oh Lord Jesus. And the, the next word is in Ephesians 4, 16. This is the most difficult prophecy, which is very hard to be fulfilled. Ephesians 4, 16 is the most difficult to be accomplished. Out from whom all the body being joined together and being knit together through every joint of the resupply and through the operation in the measure of each one part causes the growth of the body unto the building up of itself in love. Amen. This body needs to grow. Without growth, the, build, the body cannot be built. And this will the accomplish his body and then ultimately consummated in the new Jerusalem, O Lord Jesus. And this building is very related to the golden lampstand because in Revelation 1, 10 through 12, John wrote this epistle. He said, I was in spirit for the vision of the golden lampstand and for the building. It is so difficult if we are not we are not in our spirit and we cannot accomplish the building. When we are in spirit, he heard a voice from behind as, as a trumpet. And when he turned, he see the voice saying, what you see right in a scroll and send to the seven churches to Ephesians. Ephesus to Smyrna to Pergamos to Thyatira to Sardis to Philadelphia and to Laodicea, seven cities. When I turn and I saw the voice, these seven golden lampstands are the seven local churches, the seven local churches. These seven golden lampstands are related to the building, the building of the local churches. This church is related to the local churches, consummated to the building, this universal building, this one universal body. That church is the universal church, which is the one body of Christ. Thank and praise the Lord. When we build the church, is not to build the sects. In Christianity, there are so many sects. They have the. We have to ask whether they have the vision of the golden lampstands, whether they were built as the universal body or not. In this last age, we will not build the organization. We will not build the sects. That that's are the divisions. It we need to build a one body. He only have one body, and it is the universal church. And but we have the practicality in the local locality local churches. We need to have this testimony and this one. Lampstand will be consummated into the new Jerusalem ultimately. Amen. We need to see the vision of the building. Brother and sister, when we mention about the golden lampstand, it's all related to the building. Oh Lord Jesus. And when we mention about the lampstand, at least we have four, four times which was recorded in A1. The first time the lampstand was mentioned was in the building of the tabernacle in 
Exodus 25, 31 to 40. And when I have time, I will come back to it. The second instance was in the building of the temple. First Kings 7, 49. Three, the third instance was closely related to the rebuilding of temple. Rebuilding of the of temple because it was destroyed. There's no need the rebuilding. It, Zechariah 4 to 10. For the first time was related to the building of the churches. Amen. Hallelujah. The churches. The, these are the local churches throughout the earth. Which has the representation in Revelation 1, 10 through 12. Therefore, we can see these four times of mentioning of the lampstand. And the last one at the end, the Bible refers to the new Jerusalem as the universal lampstand in eternity, the aggregate of all the lampstand as a consummation of God's building. In Revelation, we mentioned about New Jerusalem. This lampstand was not yet, was no longer seven lampstands, but consummated to be only one universal lampstand. And this gold, this lampstand was composed of the gold. The New Jerusalem was pure gold. And in Genesis 21, 23, what is said? And the city has no need of the sun or of the moon that they should shine in it for the glory of God illumined and its lamp is the lamp. Amen. This is the consummation. The whole city was shined forth by God himself. God is the chi the shining is a light. God himself is the glory. Christ is the lamp. This glory shy forth through Christ because Christ is the embodiment of the triune God and element through the wall as jasper that city like clear glass reflecting God shining th throughout the city and in verse 24 said that the nations will walk by its light and this is the most com consummated in the whole universe this light has no end, shy forth through all. All things will pass away. The old creation has nothing but God himself. His illumination remains eternally. Praise him. Amen. Be said in Exodus 25, the emphasis is on Christ being the lampstand as the divine light shining with the Spirit. Exodus 25, the emphasis is on Christ. Amen. And in Zechariah 4, the emphasis is on the Spirit. Amen. And then... D, the lampstand in Exodus is the reality of lampstand in Exodus. The lampstand in Revelation 1 are the reproduction of the lampstand in Zechariah and the holy 
city at the end of Revelation is the consummated lampstand. This indicates that Christ is realized as a spirit. The spirit is expressed as the churches, and the churches are consummated as the new Jerusalem. Amen. Thank the Lord. This is the golden lampstand. Amen. Roman numeral two, the lampstand in the tabernacle and the temple signifies Christ as the embodiment and expression of the triune God. The, the golden lampstand signifies what? Signifies the triune God. The Father, the Son, and the Spirit. A, the substance of the lampstand is pure gold. The pure gold was beaten and the pure gold signifying the divine nature of God the Father. B, the form of the lampstand is the embodiment of the pure gold as the substance of the lampstand, signifying God the Spirit as embodiment of God the Father. The form of the lampstand signifies God the, the Son as the embodiment of God the Father. See the lamb, the seven lamps of the lampstand signify God the Spirit, being the seven spirits of God for God's expression. In Revelation, mentioned about seven spirits in Revelation 4. And also, we have the seven, seven lamps. Or oh, shy foes strengthen sevenfold in tons of vines. Roman number three, the lampstand in the tabernacle and the temple also signifies Christ as the divine life shining in the dwelling place of God. Christ as the divine life. The lampstand being of pure gold signifies that Christ as the light of life. Christ because of his divine life. He 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 grows and he shines in order to bud and blossom. Therefore, it is just like a tree, a tree that can grow, can branch out, can bud, can blossom. This is really a tree. D one, the lampstand consists of a base, a chaff, and three pairs of branches with cups shaped like almond blossoms and composed of knobs, calluses, and blossoms, blossoming, blossoming buds. Hence, the lampstand looks like a tree, signifying that, signifying that Christ as an embodiment of the triune God is a living tree, growing, branching, budding, and blossoming. The shining of the lampstand is actually the blossoming of life. The shining of the lampstand is actually the blossoming of life. Thus, this lampstand is really to plant the church tree. Some, of, some say that there is nothing of these words in the Bible. Of course, glowing the church tree does not appear in the Bible. But we can see from Exodus 25 to 31 onward, we see that the lampstand is like a tree that can really to bud to blossom. Thus, when we say that uh, the church, the church tree, it is not uh, is a mistake. They attack that. If anyone asks them, God will add to the him the plagues which are written in this scroll in Revelation 22, 18 to 19. Brother and sister, we do not add anything. We just explain it because the lampstand is just like a tree. We can see the picture of the lampstand and I will explain to you the Bible verse by verse. In Exodus 25:31, said, And you shall make a lampstand of pure gold, the lampstand with its base and its chaff, 
shall be made of beaten work, its cups, its calyxes, its blossom, but shall be of one piece with it. We use the words calyx and blossom bud. This calyxes and blossom buds. In fact, in scientific terminology, we will use the uh, the term called petal and sepal because uh, we will have like the uh, the calyx or the sepal. In each words, we will see its explanation. The base is for its stability, and the shaft is for strength. Means it signifies the Lord Jesus was all, always stable and strong. We will never be fall down because He is always be our stability and strength, and also the lampstand. It also have the cups. The cups equal a complete, com a complete flower, cons consists of a calyx, and a blossom bud, uh, which is actually the flower itself. The cups, if you can see the picture, one branch. Has three cups, so we have the two, the two sides have seven branches, and each cup will be shaped like almond blossoms. Signifies uh, the resurrection life blossom. Almonds signifies. Resurrection life in Numbers seventeen eight. It says that the rod of Aaron it can put forth buds and produce blossom and bore ripe almonds. Thus, almonds signifies resurrection life. The resurrection life which also blossom. Thus. The shy, to shy the the divine light is to blossom. This indicates that Christ being the light of life and our shining forth the light of life as a church are in resurrection. The calyxes containing the blossom bud signify the resurrection life as a container to sustain and support our shining forth. Yeah, so it signifies the resurrection life as a container to con sustain and support our shining forth of the divine life. The blossom bud signify the expression of the resurrection life. Praise our Lord Jesus Christ. And then we see in verse 32, And there shall be six branches going out of its sides. Three branches of the lamp stand out of one of its sides, and three branches of the lamp stand out of its other side. Thirty-three, three cups made like almond blossoms in one branch, a calyx and a blossom bud, and three cups made like almond blossoms in other branch, a calyx and a blossom bud. So for the six branches going out of the lamp stand. Each cup has the calyx, and above the uh, calyx is the uh, blossom bud. Thirty-three, and there shall be on the lampstand four cups like make like almond blossoms. Its calyxes and its blossom buds. You see the please see the picture. We have four cups. And we see it as a number 
19, 20, 21. These are four cups, just like the uh, six branches. They have the same shape. And those four cups have the calyxes as well as the blossom buds. 35 and a calyx under two branches of one piece with it. And a calyx under two branches of one piece with it. A branch. You will have a shaft. Under, under it will have the calyxes as the number 23, 24, and 25. These calyxes has no more blossom buds. These trees has no blossom buds, only calyxes. Amen. Thus, we need to see the picture. The total picture has 25 numbers. 1 to 22 has the cups as well as the calyxes and blossom buds. But 23, 24, 25 has only calyxes. 36. The, these calyxes and their branches shall be of one piece with it, all of it one bitten work of pure gold. 37, and you shall make it la its lamps seven, and set up its lamps to shine like, to shine light to the area in front of it. And 38, and its tongs and its fire pans shall be of pure gold. 39, it shall be made of talent of pure gold with all these utensils one talent equal one 100 pounds how many kg a hundred pounds one kg equal 2.2 pounds so it's approximately 45 kilograms. I calculate according to its measurements. Some some of the uh, uh, other versions say the 35 kilograms, but I do not uh, have my own measurement. Uh, I follow the new recovery version. 1 kg equal 2.2 pounds and then you divide it 100 it's approximately 45 kg 40 and see that you make them according to their pattern pattern which was shown to you in the mountain in each version has different explanation has different translation but our recovery version, the translation is according to the verse which revealed in the Bible. We hope that you all understand the shape and its components. The shape mostly signifies the triune God and all other parts signifies Christ. As embodiment of the triune God, this is one tree which can bud, can blossom, brother and sisters. Finally, I just want to mention about its function of the lampstand. What is this lampstand for? Definitely, it's for shining. The most use of it is for shining. If the lampstand does not shine, how can the priest who serves in the holy place, in the holy ho holies, in the holy place there is no window, neither the holy of holies. This is God's economy. God's 
ordination if there is no lampstand with pin will be darkness when the priest enter they will hit the show bread table or the incense altar and when they enter they can serve moreover they can also arrange the bread on the table and they will have the portion of it and have the portion of the burning of the incense without the lampstand there will be darkness thus the shining enable them to serve and to enjoy the old inclusive christ in their enjoyment especially in reading the word without the shining we will have no enjoyment and when we pray we must have the shining if there is no shining we will have no revelation moreover the lampstand shining and enlighten us to enter into the holy of holies without the leading of this shining how can we enter into the holy of holies and when we are in the holy of holies we will meet god there and the most important for its function of the lampstand in uh, psalm 73 the psalmist did not understand why the wealthy ones become wealthier even though they are wicked they become prosperous but the righteous suffer and being bitten it is to suffer becoming the lampstand you need to be bitten you need to go through the sufferings the psalmist did not understand until they went into the sanctuary why because the sanctuary in verse 17 they have the shining with not only have the shining but also have perception and the revelation thus today the church is the golden lampstand shining in exodus lampstand signifies christ at the end of the age all the churches today are the golden lampstands and christ shine forth through these lampstands the on one hand you need to come to worship god on the other hand you need to come to the church you need to come to the church to build up and we will have the revelation we will have enjoy rejoicing we will have no questions we do not understand why still have we have covid and covid still going on we have to come to the church you will understand the lord will give you revelation you will have the rejoicing hallelujah praise him and will have his body to accomplish his economy this is such a great thing oh lord jesus may the lord bless us to see the vision of this golden lampstand this vision is to produce all the churches on this earth his purpose is not to have just few lampstands in each country but his purpose that is throughout thailand you have to every city need to have the lampstand you need to proclaim it to proclaim it the gospel in every city to have the lampstand to shine forth that they will know god to receive god to have god and they will have the church 
to accomplish his heart desire. Thus, our goal, the 10-year plan, we need to preach the gospel to have many of them. At least we have 5,000 remaining fruit. And out of town, we have to plant the church tree at least 100 lampstands in within Bangkok 50 district. This is our goal. Amen. If we see the vision of the lampstand, we're willing to cooperate with him. Well, you will see in message 5, which I will add more of our function. The lampstand need to be bitten. Without this bitten, we cannot have the lampstand. It's what we have to have the cross and uh, to grow. We need this bitten and we need to grow and then grow up until we becoming the body and accompl accomplishing Amen. Thank you, Lord, for the continual sharing in message one. So the title is the type of the golden lampstand for the building up of the tabernacle and the temple. Thank you, Lord. In this message, we will look at the type and the development of the golden lampstand that is in the Bible. Thank you, Lord. In the first Roman numeral that tells us that the golden lampstand in the Bible is related to God's building, starting from Exodus to Revelation. There's about five stages. The first stage is in Exodus chapter 25, which is relating to the building up of the tabernacle. And then the next stage is in 1 Kings, which is the building up of the temple. And then Zechariah 4, which is the rebuilding of the temple. And then we see this in Revelation chapter 1, which is the building up of the churches because the golden lampstand in Revelations 1 typifies the local churches. Lastly, we see the golden lampstand, which is the type of the New Jerusalem, which is Revelations 21, which is the ultimate consummation of God's building. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Dear brothers and sisters, today... The golden lampstand has always been in development starting from Exodus up until Revelation. So thank you, Lord. In the development of the lampstand, we need to see that the lampstand in Exodus, there's only one lampstand in Exodus. And there it typifies Christ, who is the embodiment of the triune God which the golden lampstand also is the expression of the spirit, which is the spirit shining. So thank you, Lord, in the book of Revelations, the golden lampstands in Exodus became the seven lampstands in Revelation. So actually, but the seven golden lampstands are the same as the single lampstand in Exodus. It is exactly the same in shape, size, essence, and expression. So really from here, we can see that the single lampstand in Exodus has been duplicated. The church is the duplication of Christ, right? God desires to obtain the church. And the church today in the building of God's house, which is according to the God's New Testament economy, in Matthew 16, 18, the Lord says, Upon this rock, I will build my church. Amen. So today, thank you, Lord. This vision, dear brothers and sisters, needs to govern us, control us, and direct us in our church life and in our service. We all need to build up the local churches as the golden lampstand, the shining golden lampstand. And the local churches, which is the body of Christ, will consummate in the new Jerusalem. It is the ultimate consummation of God's building. So this is our vision. Thank you, Lord. Furthermore, in this message, we also see relating to the type. All these types are not teachings. 
we can apply this and experience this in our service and in our church life. So I will skip to the second Roman numeral. The second Roman numeral speaks about the lampstand in the tabernacle and also in the temple, which signifies Christ as the embodiment of the expression of the triune God. This is simply a general type. Where is our basis where we can say that the lampstand is the expression of the triune God and also the embodiment? We have the three attributes. The first is the substance, which is the pure gold, signifying the divine nature of God the Father. And then we have the form of the lampstand, which is the expression of the embodiment of the substance, which is God the Son as the embodiment of God the Father. And we have the seven lamps of the lampstand signifying God as the Spirit. So we can see this from the three bases. We can say that the golden lampstand signifies the embodiment of the expression of the triune God. Amen. This is only a general type. However, if we go into the specifics, what is the significance of the lampstand? That is in Roman numeral 3. The lampstand signifies Christ as the divine life shining in the dwelling place of God. The lampstand signifies Christ, who is shining, the divine life shining in the dwelling place of God. Then where is this light coming from? In A, which says that the lampstand being of pure gold indicates that Christ as the light of life shines because of his divine nature. So. This light of life shines because of the essence of pure gold. Pure gold indicates God's nature. So we can see that this light comes from the divine attributes. In the book of the Gospels, in John 8, 12, which the Lord said, I'm the light of the world. He who follows me shall by no means walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. In John 1, 4, which says, In him was life, and the life was the light of man. Amen. So, this Christ, in his divine attributes, it is light. If we look at other gospels, other book of the gospels, there is no mentioning of light. Because... The book of John, the gospel of John, is relating to the Lord as the God Savior. This is why it has an emphasis, it plays an emphasis on the divine attributes, which is relating to light, the shining of the divine light. So in B, which says, the lampstand being of beaten work of pure gold, it really indicates that Christ went through the suffering. Through his suffering, he expresses God's glory. So we see that this lampstand is beaten. The Lord went through suffering, which is very similar to the cherubim, which typifies God's glory. The two cherubims are all beaten into the shape and form, which signifies God's glory. So dear brothers and sisters, we need to pass through the experiences of suffering so that we can have this experience of the golden lampstand. Christ, in the same manner, had to suffer in the same way so that he can shine this divine light. This is why we see in Hebrews 2, which says that, For it was fitting for him in leading many sons into glory to make the author of their salvation perfect through sufferings. Thank you, Lord. Dear brothers and sisters, we should not look down upon suffering. Sufferings is for our benefit. And the issue and the destination is that we will be brought into glory. 
very much like how Christ was brought into glory. So thank you, Lord. C, which says the lampstand being without measure indicates that the divinity of Christ and the light he shines are immeasurable. In his divine attributes, he has given us the immeasurable spirit to us. So thank you, Lord. In D, which the brother has shared to us, then we can identify the physical appearance, the physical form of the golden lampstand. D, which says, the lampstand as a type of Christ also portrays Christ as a resurrection life, growing, branching, budding, and blossoming to shine the light. Amen. From the figure we see of the lampstand, we see that one lampstand consists of a base, a shaft, with three pairs of branches, with cups, right? And each cups, there's a shape like almond blossoms. This is from D1. The lampstand consists of a base, a shaft, and three pairs of branches with cups shaped like almond blossoms. The almond blossoms typifies the resurrection life. And these cups is composed of knobs, calyxes, and blossoms. So when we look at the golden lampstand, it is very much equivalent to a tree. And this tree is our Lord Jesus. Our Lord is the golden lampstand. This signifies in D, which our Christ is a resurrection life. And this resurrection life continues to branch, to bud. It is very much like Aaron's staff, right? Although the staff is dead, but it could still bud the almond blossoms. So this signifies resurrection life. So the lampstand has the attribute very much similar to the tree. And this tree continues to grow and to branch out and to bud out and to blossom. So when there is the branching, the budding and the blossoming, it is the growth of life. This life is the life in resurrection. And the result, the issue would be the shining. Oh, Lord Jesus, dear brothers and sisters, today we need to experience the resurrection life of Christ. This life is a life of budding, the life of blossoming and branching. This Christ is like the lampstand. He is the shaft. All the six branches, the three pairs, it grew out from the shaft. So each branches signifies all the believers. So today, this Christ in himself, he does not need to grow, but the Christ in us needs to grow. Dear brothers and sisters, how much can we grow today? The more we grow, the more we have this light shining out of us. So this light is the issue of the growth in life of Christ. Oh, Lord Jesus, thank you, Lord. So, dear brothers and sisters, during these times, we need to have an experience, the lampstand experience, where Christ can grow in us freely. We can be those who live this life, live the life of Christ, mingle ourselves as the one spirit with the Lord, to live the life of Christ out. And this Christ would have the freedom in us. Amen. Thank you, Lord. And then the issue would be, we would shine Christ out to others. So thank you, Lord. This shining is directly correlated with the growth in life. So furthermore, when we look at the figure of the lampstands, we see there are also seven more lampstands shining in the darkness. So when we look at another perspective, we see that this light comes out from the lampstand. Oh, Lord Jesus, thank you, Lord. The lampstand can only shine because each lampstand has lamps and there is oil. Amen. So this shining 
also needs the burning of the oil. It also comes from the burning of the wick. So thank you, Lord. Today, in our church life, we can have this shining as the shining lampstand. We need to experience the filling, the fresh filling of the oil, which is to be filled with the spirit and the divine attributes. And the wick is humanity, which is the human attributes. So the golden lampstand, the entire lampstand is made of gold. The only one part, which is the wick, this wick typifies Christ's humanity. So in our church life and our service, we need to live a life of the prophet to serve in the holy place. Their function is to trim the wick and to fill the oil so that this lampstand would continue to shine. So why, dear brothers and sisters, do we need the morning revival? On the one hand, it is to partake of Christ as the supply of life. But on the other hand, as we are partaking Christ, we're also enlightened by the golden lampstand. So in order for the lampstand to shine, there is a need for us to trim the wick. So this is what the prophet has to do every morning. They need to trim the wick. If there is no trimming of the wick, then the parts which is already shard, it will produce smoke. So the lampstand would not be able to shine that much. The part of the wick that has been shard, it signifies humanity that is fallen, that is not proper, that needs to be cut off. So we need to have a proper humanity, the humanity of Jesus. So in our morning revival, many times we have the experience of the trimming, of the Lord's trimming. So in this kind, in this way, day by day, every morning as we're having our morning revivals, as we are intimate with the Lord, the Lord will continue to trim us. Even in the meetings, in the church meetings, the Lord would use some of the saints who minister the Lord's word to trim us. The shard wick would be cut off. The more it is cut off, the more we are enlightened. On the other hand, we need to be filled with oil. Oil signifies the spirit. By exercising our spirit, our living is to live in the mingled spirit, being one with the Lord. This is how we live a life of shining, having the experience of the golden lampstand. Thank you and praise the Lord. So dear brothers and sisters, Christ needs to grow in us so that he can shine out of us. And furthermore, we need to receive the Lord's dealing, his trimming every morning, every meetings in the church life. The Lord will trim us so that we will shine even more. Praise the Lord. E, which says the lampstand being in the holy place, indicates that we can have the experience of the lampstand only when we have been built up as a dwelling place of God. The lampstand is in the holy place. The holy place is in the tabernacle. The tabernacle consists of 48 boards, which signifies the believers. Today, we as believers, we need to be built up with all the saints to be the tabernacle. If there is no building, there is no dwelling place of God. If there is no dwelling place of God, we cannot experience the lampstand, dear brothers and sisters, O oh Lord Jesus. So we need to progress from the outer court into the holy place. We need to build up the church of God. We need to build up the church. The more we have this building, the more we have the dwelling place of God, then we would have the experience of the lampstand, the shining of God. And F to H speaks about the shining. The light leads us, leads us to enjoy Christ as a supply of light, which is typified by the Shober bread. 
Amen. The prophets need to serve in the tabernacle. The first thing they had to do is to enjoy the bread of the presence, which is Christ as a supply of life. Then they would come to the lampstand to trim the wick. In reality, if we see in the revelations, it is like this. So in our experience, when we enter into the holy place, the first thing we see is the shining of the lampstands, which then lead us into the enjoyment of Christ as the life supply. Then afterwards, we would go back to the lampstand. So we need to see that this shining of the lampstand will bring us into the enjoyment of the life supply. Then it will bring us into prayer in our fellowship with God and to enjoy him as the fragrance, the incense of resurrection. And then he brings us into the Holy of Holies to enjoy Christ with the throne of grace. And we have an intimate fellowship with God. So all these types, O oh Lord Jesus, it is not a doctrine. It is our experience. We need to experience Christ for the building of God today. We need to build up the church as the golden lampstand. This is for the building up of his heart's desire in Revelation 1, which is the local churches. So in this message, dear brothers and sisters, we need to go out. We need to go out to plant the church trees, the luminaries, which is the local church, which is the duplication of Christ as the various local churches to accomplish God's heart's desire consummating in the new Jerusalem. Amen. Hallelujah. May the Lord gain us. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Thanks and praise the Lord. Brothers and sisters, in the message one of this conference, we can see clearly that the tie of the golden lampstand in the entire Bible is for God's building. I am Brother Gason. We are at for the Roman numeral one, two, three for this message. I will share something that I get from Roman numeral one. He said that the progression of the biblical revelation concerning the golden lampstand, we can know that in Exodus, 1 Kings, Zechariah, when Lord builds every time, it would mention that lampstands were built up. So we see a clear picture and we need to apply it in the New Testament in the New Testament, from Revelation 1 to Revelation 21, we see that Lord's knee is building the local church as the lampstands. At the end, the aggregate of all the lampstands is the New Jerusalem, that is the consummation of the mingling of God and man. So, since how to build the lampstand and God's church every day? We need to care for the Christ himself because the lampstands are made by God that typify God's divine nature. So today, we have two main ways to enjoy the law, to increase the law. First, we need to enjoy the God's word. Praise the law. We have the five chapter Bible reading each day. I get strength from that because the saints are willing to pay price to enjoy God's word unceasingly. Not only read out the facts in the words, we also enter into the footnote and conclusion that talks about the God's and eternal plan that is hidden in the Old Testament. Every time when we review, we feel rejoice because it is God's plan that need to be accomplished. That is the God's words, which we need to enter unceasingly. Amen. Another point, we need to pray to pursue the law and to the God's will. Recently, 10 years praying is carrying out in Thailand and Laos. We need to consecrate to the law. In the past message, we see that we need to be the ghost is 
expression that is God manifested in the flesh. We need to come to Lord's presence to pursue the Lord's will and to protect the burning shepherding teaching building. Therefore, I appreciate to pray when we have the vital group to pray. No need much requirements, and the saints enjoy it very much for God's move. So, saints, we need to pay price to protect the God's building. May the God increase, and we are built up to be the bright lampstand. Amen. Next, brother Gaishan will share Roman numeral two and three. Thanks the Lord. Amen. Thanks the Lord. In Roman numeral one, we have known that the lampstand is related to God's building from the tabernacle, the temple, and church. In Revelation one twenty, say that the seven lampstands are the seven churches. That is the consummation of building in the New Jerusalem. For Roman numeral two. The lampstand in the tabernacle and the temple signifies Christ as the embodiment and expression of the Triune God. The substance of the lampstand is pure God, signifying the divine nature of God the Father. The form of the lampstand is the God the Son. The seven lamps of the lampstand signify God the Spirit for God's expression. For Roman numeral three. The lampstand in the tabernacle and the temple also signifies Christ as the divine life shining in the dwelling place of God. Especially in E, say that the lampstand being in the holy place indicates that we can have the experience of the lampstand only when we have been built up as the church, temple, or the dwelling place of God. And the lampstand will shine us in three aspects. First, direct us to the table of the bread of presence to enjoy Christ. Also, lead us to golden incense altar to enjoy Christ. In the prayer and at the end, it will guide us into the holy of holies to enjoy Christ as the testimony of God, with the throne of grace for our closest fellowship with God. Thanks the Lord. He say that the lampstand as a type of Christ, also portrays Christ as the resurrection life, growing, branching, budding, and blossoming to shed the light. It looks like a tree. There are branches, base, shed, knobs, and blossoming buds. It looks like a tree of life in the resurrection. So today we plant the church. Three, we need to be under the vision of lampstand to instruct us to build up the church. The churches that are need to be according to the meaning of the vision of lampstand will build up in next ten years, for the testimony to express in the localities. Thanks the Lord, Amen. I am Brother Sutad. I will share the building of church in Langot. There are nineteen families. Fifty people joined the meeting. Thirty-two people, twenty-three brothers, twenty-seven sisters, twenty-nine Cambodians, twenty-one Thais. My house opened on twenty-fourth for two years. We think it is the permanent meeting place, but it is not suited. So we pray to the God to build up a meeting place, and God given the land that is one. Hundred twenty-five square meter and five hundred thousand baht. By the God's grace and mercy, fifth April two thousand twenty-one started to build it. The offer from Eastern Sands is two hundred thousand baht. So we have the fellowship about the framework. The worker is the same in Rangon. He can do it, but he is not good at building. The offer. That from the church in South, and other places is enough to build it. It used three months to build. There are 
meeting hall. Serving one's room. Kitchen. Restroom. Dining room. Total offer is. Five hundred fifty one thousands and one hundred fifteen baht. Building cost is five hundred seven thousands six hundred thirty baht. The balance is forty three thousand four hundred and eighty five baht. We have fellowship to take the balance to decorate the church in that to do the selling. Electricity, the front and side wall tire. Total cost is forty two thousand and sixty two sixty five baht. The balance is one thousand twelve twenty baht. We have fellowship with the work that we will establish the lampstand in Rangot on third October two thousand twenty one. It is Lord's Day through the light group in East. We use online to invite saints to have the meeting via application line to be rejoiced with us. Roman five two, through whom also we have obtained access by faith into this grace, in which we stand and boast because of the hope of the glory of God. Thanks to God, praise the Lord for the body in the locality over this time. May the glory God be filled you, rejoice and peace in faith by power of Holy Spirit. Hello, I am Guy Chagamopon from the God's Church in Dad. I will share the preaching preaching gospel during the COVID nineteen. I desire to have the proper life before the God's will and correspond with sixty six books Bible. I am worried so that we will perish. In the beginning of year, I appointed with the saints in Rangao to visit the saints every week. In the saints' house, there are their parents, relatives, neighbors who, when we visit them, we could meet the unbelievers first and preach the gospel to them. First, I preach three minutes and observe whether the she has question and want to know more God or not. Next. I use this book to preach the gospel to her. Thanks to the Lord, outbreak of the COVID nineteen and as well as building the church in Rangao, the elderly cannot enter and the house cannot go. And I am also afraid of COVID nineteen, but go out to the elderly that are allowed to go. I go with the sister who do building and sometimes with the chosen pick. To do the trial meeting, when we have trial meeting, there is an elder pass through and say, "Can I enter?" I amuse her and say, "Enter what?" She say, "Enter the Jesus Christ." She say that she want to be saved, and I bring her to the construction site and let the brother baptize for her. For who is not convenient, I call the brother to baptize for them at home. Sometimes somebody say for. At the construction site, I will preach gospel to her and get her. Somebody send the building material to us. I have them to unload and preach the gospel to her and get her. Sometimes the children go fishing by motorcycle behind the construction site. We preach the gospel to them and we get children thanks and praise the Lord. From January to August, we get thirty eight new believers. I did a statistic like this. I cannot use all word my knowledge to preach gospel. Roman one sixteen. I say, say that the gospel is the power of God. Roman ten fourteen. How shall they believe into him of whom they have not heard? And how shall they 
here without one who proclaims him. And 17, so faith come out of hearing and hearing through the word of Christ. Thanks and praise the Lord. Glory to be the God. May God give them the overflowing grace to you. Amen. Brothers and sisters, rejoice in the Lord. I'm Brother Antipas serving in Laos. Now I'm propagating in Luang Prabang. Luang Prabang is the northern city of Laos. It's a traveling city. It has total about 100,000 population. It is the one of the three important city in Laos and propagating in Luang Prabang. After I had fellowship with some brothers and all the full timers with my family on 12 April. And we came to Luang Prabang and rented a place. And we have the practice of God's ordained way to propagate the gospel, to establish the house meeting, the group meeting, and the Lord's Day meeting. And now on Tuesday and on Friday, we would go out to the college to preach the gospel. Even though during this time of COVID-19, the number of students are not that great, but we uh, continue steadfastly to preach. In August, we have brought two brothers to be baptized in the Lord. And we have established a house meeting right now. We have five saints who can use the nourishing material in the whole meeting so that they will all be nourished. Not only whole meeting, but we also have the Lord's Day meeting. Around 10 or 15 saints who are holding the Lord's Day meeting in the rented place. And this year we have a burden to establish the group meeting, the second burden. In 2022, in April, we can arrive 25 people on the Lord's Day and establish the church in Luang Prabang. We plan in three years, we can gain 50 remaining foods. The third goal is every year we gain two college students to enter into the full-time training. May all the saints pray for the propagation of Luang Prabang.